There's the war. Unwanted neighbors, uh, elaborate a little bit. What does that mean? What, what transpired between you guys to, to lead to such a, a, a terrible war that's happening? Despite the getup, we're actually quite nice people. And when we got, when North reached out to us, they gave us a heads up. And I quote, we are a coalition of more than 2,500 pilots. We have three alliances and we're going to be moving nearby. So that as soon as I heard this, the first thing I thought was, is this a threat? Because it sounds like they're posturing. Needless to say, they said, we don't want a blue because we don't want to avoid blue donuts. And the only thing I heard was they want to live close to us and allow their PVPers to attack our miners and our ratters. So naturally, the only correct response was to start a war with them until they left. That sounds pretty reasonable. Rain, as the diplomat of North, how do you respond? I mean, half that's right. So we pitched to them saying, hey, let's do no blues, non-invasion pack, so we're not going to be in each other's space, killing bases, attacking structures, you know, when Sov drops, taking Sov, etc. It's just, let's be neutral neighbors. If you guys have a force coming after you, because we know they have the first player outpost, that we can come and help, or vice versa, if we have folks coming in after us, you can hum up, come help. Otherwise, let's just use each other as like, you know, easy content on the front door. It'll help make your P your miners, your PVEers safer, as well as train your hunters to learn how to hunt. And he went from, well, we don't really want branch to, hey guys, war declared on North, let's go. So here we are. So explain a little bit more about how that works, because a non-invasion pact would mean that there would have to be SOB, correct? So how would that necessarily work at this time and place? Um, so yes and no, because a lot of non-invasion can include other things, right? So I mentioned bases. So a lot of folks around know that if you want to provoke a fight, you can go sit in someone's base and run the base. And usually 99% of the time, if they're smart, they'll show up and defend it. Or even something like gate camping outside of their stations or anything along those lines, like attacking like the Care Bears and whatnot. So you can still have, I would say, pretty dramatic acts of aggression what with or without a non-invasion pack and so the non-invasion pack kind of gets rid of those really really obnoxious things that people have to deal with all the time so like we like in a war we'd have to deal with that with each other right but in general if i'm gonna go roaming into space like if i go down to delve and i want people to fight me i'll just go run a base or two and they'll get really really mad and next time i'm there they'll definitely come and fight if they don't fight me the first time Ah, interesting. So is it true, though, that North is a massive coalition? And how many people are in that coalition? So the 2500 number is correct. I don't... Coalition, I think, is the wrong word, but it's also a set of alliances. So I think when you think set of alliances, people immediately jump to coalition, which I've seen coalitions thrown around a lot. But really what it is is we have North, we have Nerf, which is, you know, because of the limit of 10 corps, right? So we can only have so many people. And then we have our third alliance, um, who's more like industry driven and whatnot. So instead of putting them all under one alliance, we're stuck with three alliances. So like coalition fits, but at the same time, it doesn't fit if you're thinking in terms of like leadership, right? So all the same people in charge of those three alliances are the same group that we all have in our leadership channels. So is Ian, is Ian an official diplomat of North? Ian, Ian? yes, she is. Yes, 100%. Because that word coalition was a quote from her. Yeah, well, me. she so she's not an EVE Online player, but in turn, so from her perspective, she's like, okay, we have three alliances, we're a coalition. Whereas, like my perspective, being in an actual like coalition panda fam over on EVE Online, okay. I see it like completely differently. So like in my coalition on EVE Online, I have the entire North Blue, all of Drone Lands Blue. And now currently with the war rat, we're allied with legacy. So the Southeast blue. And so to me, when I think coalition, I think of that massive of a scale. Whereas in echoes, a coalition could just be, Hey, we're a bunch of alliances and we're all stuck together because we'd all be under one alliance, but the game mechanics don't allow us to do that. So are you I saying, are you saying maybe the, the more of the issue is the actual size, the size of teams that that's the limitation. You would almost consider yourself more of an alliance. It's just that there's so few slots that you have to kind of become this coalition. 
Yeah, and so if I say, hey, we're one alliance, I'm, I mean, honestly, like, literally, I would be lying because we have three alliances. But in terms of, like, if you're thinking leadership of those folks, it's not, hey, we have our representatives from North. It's everyone's together. And so as in theory, like the moment, I think it's October, I think that Damon was saying that the moment in October when they open that up, we're just going to consolidate everyone. And I'm assuming other alliances are going to do that too. Because I know SHH has more than one alliance, but I don't, I don't think I'd consider them a coalition at this point, unless like I'm missing some of their blues, but. Okay. Now in terms of where your team was initially located, Rain, um, was it true that you guys were more located near Branch and now you're kind of uh, venturing over into this area? Are you guys planning to take over Sov in that area? No, so we're focused on Branch right now. We initially lived in K3J um, in Venal. So, but anyone who knows sort of, this is where like some of the mechanics from NetEase are kind of confusing because they say Sov is going to drop. Well, in EVE Online, there's no Sov in Venal or it's very limited Sov. So it's like, well, in Echoes, is it going to be Venal's going to have Sov or is it going to be NPC space like in EVE Online? And so that's where, where we said, okay, well, knowing what we know in EVE Online, because a lot of us are EVE Online vets, we said, let's go to Branch. Branch is a little bit better. You know, they have stations there, which they don't in EVE Online, so that's another perk. But at least we could try and take an own solve and see if that's what we want to do, which uh, I, so far I'm having a blast, so. Okay. The, the, the rumor I heard was that you guys were pushed out of Venal, and that's why you're I don't know who lives in Venal to push us out. Because we kicked some folks out of there as well. There was a, I believe it was a French alliance. There was a video posted from uh, September 12th of Zero blowing all you guys up. Oh, is that Lady Puckett's group? LP? Zero. Zero was blowing you up, and then you guys moved like the next day. Seems like you ran from them. I don't know who they are. I do know we were in talks with Lady Puckett, but I also, and this is where I get a little. Um, I don't know if tilted is the right word, but watching these videos where it, it's just showing people lock like one or two cruisers and they blow up and everyone's like, yeah, dude, we're so elite. Look at his PVP. I'm just like, yeah, like, no thanks. Like, oh no, we lost, a, like we lost a cruiser or we killed a cruiser. Like, what does that matter? Who cares? So in terms of the war that you guys have had between each other, I mean, what would be the tally or total in terms of who, who would we say is winning this side? How many, how many losses has each side taken on estimate? Can I give North some credit? Yeah, of course. They're using a really interesting composition of ships that I've never seen before in EVE Echoes. They came at us with about 40 people the other day. And the first thing I thought is like, what kind of ships are they flying? So I pull up the overview, I scroll down the list and all I see is frigate wrecks. He just came. Is that new? Because I don't see where that is in the ship tree. Frigates? They're the first ship you can fly. <laughs> no, frigate wrecks. I was trying to make one, oh, but it seems oh. like that's all you guys have is frigate I mean, wrecks. Let me just come to BKG and we can get you one. Oh. So, um, do you want to hear my comp? That's actually like a really good segue because I wanted to brag about this. So my corp started what we did, Condor 2s. And Condor 2s are like the absolute best because you can just orbit any idiot at like 20 kilometers and just shoot them. All right, so Radar, PvP, or Miner, etc. That's all you do. It's so much fun. But um, they're calling, our alliance is calling them the Mighty Ducks, right? And so we're calling them Quacks. So how we measure everything, like one Condor 2 is a Quack. So how we measure things is in terms of Quacks. So if we kill something worth 100 mil, but we only lose like five Condor 2s, that's like 25 mil or five Quacks. So we say we won. Like, yeah, we lost more ships, but we killed something more expensive. And I asked, I asked my alliance, because a lot of these guys are out PvPing on, on daily. Like, I've been super swamped with work this week. But they said uh, the highest quacks that they've ever gotten from a single kill was a succubus, which was worth a thousand quacks. And so, like, that is how we are measuring our, uh, our success with murdering some of these... Uh, or murdering SHH folks. No, I was... Didn't you just say that it's not about one single kill and that's the only thing you're going to quote as a sign of success? Yeah. Well, well, so we're consolidating them, right? So that was one ship, oh, okay. right? So I, I understand what you're saying, right? So, yeah, who cares? Don't understand me, understand you. Oh, I, oh, I'd understand me just perfectly fine. So, but we're doing 1,000 to 2,000 quacks a day. So if you're thinking, like, that's roughly, what, 1 to 2 billion kills a day? 
So instead of yes, here's one battle, or here's you know one gank that we had, here's our consolidated list. And then we've also been keeping track with some other metrics that I've been tracking behind the scenes, because we've been uh, you know trying to organize you know what does war really look like, right? Like we you no, know, there's no sob. It's not like we're out there taking systems or anything. So my so question, my this. question would be, what was the offering though? Because we wanted to have a non-invasion pact into um, into the Silent Alliance. Why would that be lucrative for them? Why would if I'm if I'm Mr. Pay to Win, why would I say, sure, come in here and kill my miners and kill my kill my guys? That's going to be okay. What, what what's the benefit for them? Yeah. So and we've noticed this with a lot of folks, not just our group or SHH, but most other groups. Is most folks talk about trimming the fat or getting rid of care bears. And I say care bears kind of in a derogatory manner as people who exclusively PVE. But not just that, because we get it. You need miners. You need PVEers. You need folks getting in that tax. But folks who exclusively PVE, but they're bad at it, right? So they're the guy who sit out in home system when the when there's a hostile fleet nearby, and they just sit and mine in the retriever. And you're like, okay, dude, like, like let's get somewhere safe. Let's put you with all of our PVPers so you're safe. And they're just like, nah, man, I'm not on comms. I'm gonna do my own thing. Blah blah blah. And so th those are like the prime targets for either of our groups to be attacking. We don't want people like that in our group, and I'm assuming SHH doesn't want people like that in their group. You want intelligent PVEers or intelligent Care Bears who are out not only making money, assisting the Alliance, but they're also smart about it. And so that's what the benefit would have been, right? So we would have Hunters going in, and instead of, okay guys, warp your Condor 2 to a gate, oh, right-click approach on that Retriever, easy tackle, let's get all the other Condor 2s in and get some Quacks. It's, hey, like, you have to go and hunt him down, tackle him. Where'd he warp off to? Can you follow? Can we set up a gate camp so that when we chase the PVEers out, we can catch them? And those are some tactics, right? You want folks to be able to practice. And I feel like some of this might be, like, new information. Maybe not to the people here, but maybe to the folks in chat. Like, this is should not be new information. You should want your, your PVPers or your PVEers to learn, adapt, and grow and make those smart decisions. What is your comment, Mr. Pay to Win? From my perspective, they think a non-invasion pact, as they say, with open content is a benefit to both alliances. But here's the deal. Whether someone's a Care Bear or someone's just learning the game, I'm not here to try and scare them off. That's not my goal. As an alliance director, my goal is to make safe space for all of our members, whether they want to mine or whether they want to PvP. I'm not here to turn my nose up at people who are inexperienced at the game, which seems like North is turning their nose up at some of the more inexperienced players, and that's fine. We've got experienced players, we've got inexperienced players, and I like to take the approach that my number one goal as an alliance is to help each of our members make as much ISK as possible. So one of the things, as an example, that North thinks they're impacting on us and uh, some of their own members have shared this with me. They're doing a contest for base kills in Declan. And this has been one of, the, one of my favorite things they have done actually, because I've been encouraging people not to farm scout anomalies near where we live. North just made that easy for me because if I went, and went to blow up the bases, they'd be mad at me. Now they're just mad at them and I don't want them farming there anyway. So they're actually helping me get my my tasks accomplished so i appreciate that but that's kind of what's happening we want to help our care bears learn to play we want to help them make isk and eventually become active contributors of an alliance whether they trend more towards pve or pvp now they are right the care bears do quit eventually especially as they get blown up but in my experience you can turn a care bear into a pvp or if you give them enough guidance now, I did want to ask you a question I think many people are wondering because of your name uh, with Mr. Pay to Win. Is it a true name? Do you actually pay to win? Have you, did you plex up your alliance or are you really teaching your members how to earn their ISK without spending money? It's a really good question. My name is Mr. Pay to Win because I play online games and I pay to win. But I come from games like Game of War or Kings of Avalon or things along those, na those lines. You can't really pay to win in EVE. With regards to plexing, I mean, the real question is, is that how much plex is too much plex and how much plex is a smart amount of plex to use. For me, everything's about time is equal to money. If I can buy some plex and sell it and make 100 million isk, that's 
easier than just farming it for 20 hours. Do you know what I mean? So I like to view as time is money. With regards to helping our alliance with ISK, I don't do that at all. One of the things that I'm a firm believer in is I don't believe in handouts. I want to teach people how to fish, as they say, as opposed to hand people fish. Because if you start handing people the fish, they're never going to learn how to do anything for themselves. And what you're going to do is you're going to create this alliance of people who are dependent on one person, and that's a complete disaster. But we did do things a little bit earlier than most alliances. We did get an alliance made as one of the first five alliances. We did get one of the first citadels. We did have an ore buyback program on the second day of the game. All these things were made possible because there were a lot of experienced players in SHH that knew how to make ISK. And that has helped fund everything that we're doing. Now, the capsular outpost you guys have built, how, how, long, how many people do you have actively defending it at a time? Is this just you're throwing it up for shits and giggles? Or is this something that you guys are going to have this up here and hold it and keep it fortified? I want to be honest with you, and I got outvoted on this one. We made this capsular outpost because there were supposed to be different types of benefits associated with it. None of these benefits are implemented yet. We were the first capsular outpost completed. I know this because it was confirmed by the devs. The very next maintenance, they implemented a blow up animation before they actually implemented any real benefit of the capsular outpost. So the first thing I thought was, I just want to blow it up myself. How funny would that be? Put a capsular outpost down and then blow up my own outpost as a protest. Is that why you reinforced it the other day? Then my other members were like, wouldn't it be great if it was just named come at bro and encourage people to come PVP us every day? So and how- that, And that's exactly what we did. We want the PVP yeah, I, daily. I would say that that was actually a strategic to put their own base into reinforcement to, to, to pick the time when it comes out. So it dictates the fight on their turn. And just from my unbiased opinion, a big middle finger to. I think you cut it right, cut out like like near, it, near the end. Um, what was the lot? You said it's a big middle finger to the devs? No, no. It's, I, 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 by them putting it into reinforcement uh, themselves and picking the engagement time, I felt it was a big middle finger to North in, in aspects of the war. Uh, I here see. you have North getting a force to come. Uh, try to put it in reinforcement and they did it themselves now what do you think in terms of growth for you mr pay to win do you think that um where you're located now is going to be the only area you want to remain or do you think as sov starts to come out do you guys think you're going to start branching out to branch what i said is one of my favorite quotes and i don't mean to mix the real world with new eden but one of my favorite quotes is from Goldman Sachs, and it's to never forego money you can make today for money you might make tomorrow. So from my perspective, Sav is supposed to come out in December, but I've played a lot of games to know developers aren't always on time. So I'm not gonna plan for something until I know it's released. What I can tell you is our goal is to live exactly where we're living with no intent on moving at this point. If something changes with Saab or more information becomes available, I'm not one to hold fast to my strategy or, or opinion when presented with new information. But for today, we do plan to live here and we have no intent on moving. So dedicated in the decision, but flexible in the approach, so to speak. Especially if new information gets released that changes things. Of course, 100%. I think a lot of times people kind of get in this analysis paralysis where they over plan and they um, try to plan so much so that you know they don't necessarily have all the factors so it's you can plan all you want but at the end of the day if things change you, that's just kind of ends up being a waste of time um, so well that's very interesting um, I am curious to see how the two teams are going to be colliding a little bit more so it sounds like there is going to be absolutely no possibility of any non-invasion pact um, and you're not interested in a non-aggression pact at this point, it sounds like. Is that correct? This isn't Farmville. <laughs> well, I guess it could be Farmville if you're sure farming other like players. It. Yeah, I'll say it sure feels like it. My guys are having a blast. <laughs>
just depends on where you're going, I guess. So um, how big is the alliance then for um, the Silent Alliance? Because in comparison to North, which is an alliance coalition hybrid, that I, I would consider it a hybrid just because it's kind of a forced coalition. So how big is the Silent Alliance in comparison? Whether you call it, when, when North says that there are 2,500 pilots in their coalition or now not a coalition coalition, it's interesting because I've never seen them fleet up more than 40 people. And I think North is about as dead as a dead space pocket because I think they've got 2,500 inactive members. I've never actually seen them fleet anything more than that. With regards to the Silent Alliance, on the other hand, we may not have as many pilots as some of these other people brag to have, but we have very dedicated people. We are constantly removing inactives. And one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that we can fleet up a decent sized force and defend ourselves at will. And Are you talking about the 20, the, tw the 200, 250 ish you guys had the other day when I warped to one of your asteroid belts, you had folks mining while there was a CTA to defend your armor timer. Is that the numbers you're talking about? Cause that does not sound like fun to me. When we had a CTA to defend our armor timer, we actually never had a CTA to defend Call our arms. armor timer. Big timer, ping like for 24 hours. You sure? Are you referring to, which day are you referring to? Um, the one where I was warping my pod around scouting. Yeah, so that was the other day. That was not a call to arms to defend the timer, as a matter of fact. And one of the things that we always encourage is that people should continue doing what they're doing is until we have intel that people are heading down. And one of the things that has been amazing for me to watch is there's a couple of North members that are very disheartened with North leadership, and they've been sharing some screenshots with me with what's happening over there one of them said to me and i quote i'm so upset that north is allied with the chinese alliance dssl because they kept blowing us up this is ridiculous and they're very upset about it and as, they were someone sharing... who, as someone who deals with blue on blue drama we don't have issues with dssl at all they're actually a very valuable ally we assisted them the other morning um, it was like a 6 a.m. op, and we almost had 100 dudes on a, I think it was like closer to AU time zone when we're at EU time zone and US time zone alliance. So there's been no drama about accidental blue shootings of DSSL and DSSL fi firing back? No. Are you telling your members As far as I'm aware. I mean, if they're dealing with it, they're dealing with it by themselves, to which I have no idea how they expect leadership to deal with it if they don't tell us. Well, one of your leaders pinged about it in your Discord, and it was sent to me as a screenshot. So are you saying that you don't read your own pings? Oh, I 100% read my own pings. If you look, they probably have my pings out there too. Do you want me to bring, bring them up? All I'm saying is I can't change what people tell me. All I can say is that you have some North members or that are very unhappy. I don't see any DSSL here. And it's very easy to like fake screenshots too, by the way. I can show you how if you'd like, if you want to actually create some more propaganda, maybe we'll see it on the Reddit or something with vote brigading that Mr. Avery Lewis has to deal with every time you guys try some of this. Of, um, what's going on with, with leadership? So it seems like Mr. Paytowing, you said that there are some issues within North that are occurring and Rain says that that is not necessarily the case. Um, you know, is some of this war less fleet war and is it more of like a political war, do we think? I think that's always part of war, right? Like, yeah, you're PvPing in game, but like a lot of it is the propaganda, the spinning, the whatnot, you know, whether it be on shows here, on social media, etc. And unfortunately, until the devs give us that API access where we can have a kill board. Everything is going to be he said, she said, and everything is going to be skewed to the side that's telling. Um, it's going to be considered propaganda unless you actually have the facts to back it up. And I do know several alliances, um, the silent one being one of them, that actually reports every single kill they have. So they actually have, oh, you, you say you didn't lose as many ships? Well, here's X amount of kill mails from that day at this time proving otherwise. And I encourage most alliances to do that. Uh, and even in ours, we have an alliance-wide kill board where if it's on an official op, everyone is required to put kill mails as well as lost mails up there. So we can actually have a, an accurate battle after action. 
for me, I think encouraging people to post their deaths and their kills is one of the best things any alliance leadership can do because it helps you find people that need help improving. It helps you find people who are out there destroying people. And for example, we've got one guy in our alliance. This guy's amazing. His name is Tremec. He actually lost a several hundred million isk ship last night. But you know what's really great about Tremec? is on that ship, he got the 498 kill marks in this Omen Navy issue off of just north before he lost the ship. And I have to say, as soon as he lost that ship, the first thing I did was send him is to get another one, because what a great investment that was. You should tell him about the bug where the kill marks transfer. So no matter how many times your ship dies, you always get the same amount of kill marks on the next one. Yeah, we actually just discovered that last night, but that was the first time he lost it. It was quite amazing to see someone get 498 kills in one single ship against one alliance, and that's just one person. I'd like to know how, if he has all that and screenshot it, because that's going to be a lot of screenshots. He shared. He and shared that's... a list. Uh, he shared um, a uh, what do you call it? I can't think of the word. Like a collage of kill shots on the Reddit thread where he put a link to a lot of them.